Okay, so sometime last year I created a video, an instruction video on how to use feature templates to create tab and slot features. And I'll put a link in the description to that video if probably wise to watch that one first to get context for this video. So very quickly, I've built a tab and slot dialog using feature templates. We select the edge, we select the face, we select a body, we put in some parameters for the tabs and we hit OK and our geometry is created for us. Well, how did I get to this point here? Let's have a look at a few of the features that we've got. We've got a tab or secondary tab and we've got a normal cutout through an adjacent body. If we look at the feature that's been created, we've got some choices here. I can put a corner profile of a radius onto the tab or I can put a chamfer onto the tab of a given value. So let's have a look how did I get to create this tab and slot. Okay so here's the the part that I generated to start with and What's really important when creating feature templates is you can create the features using regular NX commands and features in the first place. Um, but with this particular implementation, there's a few extra good things going on here. So let's just step through the, the base part and then we'll explain the feature template construction. So stepping through, I created a tab, I created another tab, gave it some translucency and another color just so I can differentiate between them. I then created a measure which is the length of the curve or the edge of the base tab and this is useful for defining the pattern later on. I then created a sketch to determine the secondary tab and what's important when doing feature templates is every expression that you're going to use downstream name them so you know exactly what they're doing. So I have a starting position for the first tab, I have a width and I have a depth. But naming everything such that if I go into expressions, we can see what those parameters are. Here we go, tab depth, tab start and width and so on. I then created the tab, of course, I then created two break corner features, okay? And these are, are suppressed by expression. So I can add a radius or a chamfer onto the tab according to an expression value. How do we do that? We set up a corner profile choice formula, which is just an integer number. And then we have a chamfer suppress and we have a radius suppress formula. And that basically says if corner profile choice is two, then unsuppress the chamfer. If corner profile choice is one here, then unsuppress the radius. If it's zero, suppress both. And my corner profile choice is set to zero. So if I change this to one and hit apply, you'll notice that the radius becomes unsuppressed. If I make it two and hit apply, my break corner becomes unsuppressed. So that's how we control the suppression state of those two features. I then want to make a cutout within the, the mating body. So again, I generate a sketch. I name my parameters. So the width of the cutout is the tab width plus twice the slot gap. And I have a slot gap in X and Z direction. And the slot depth is a parameter that uses a sheet metal material thickness. So this gap is uh, parametric to the material thickness. And that's our basic construction. 
We then pattern our tabs, and the pattern feature is a count and span. The span is that measure distance at the beginning, and you can see that this is a, uh, an expression all of its own. So we've got the measure edge, less the tab width, less, sorry, less the tab start, less the tab width, less the tab end. So these are all of the parameters. So we've, we've got the tab start is the distance of the first tab from the end. The tab width is obviously the width of the tab. The tab end is a distance from the last tab to the end of the curve. And the measure is the full edge. So we can get our span distance for the, uh, for the count and span parameters of the pattern feature and the count is using a, a value again a named expression called tab quantity and we do that for the tabs and we do exactly the same for the normal cutouts and this is a little bit simpler because the pattern span is the same as the other pattern and then that second pattern is, of course, the sketches. And then we do a normal cutout on the sketches. So that's how the part has actually been built. Now let's go and have a look at the feature template for this. Let's go find feature templates. I'm not sure where it is. I just type it in the command finder and the feature template author comes up. So the first thing we want to do is to select our features from the part navigator and what we're creating. The two tabs are gonna be from the target part. So we want the measure through to the normal cutout. And we add those into, uh, where's our, there we go. So our template studio navigator, we've got our features. And the features are brought along the expressions that, that uh, have built those features. Okay, now we start building our dialog. So we configure the user interface. It's put in some basic information that I need to generate these features. The edge, the face, and the target body, as we had before. So these have all come in into separate groups. Um, first of all, our main dialog, we want to call this tab and slot. And I'm going to put two there so it doesn't overwrite the one I've already created. And template name, I'm going to do the same. If I can type and, it's always a good, good start. And now I just want to construct my dialog. Now, of course, understanding user interface rules in NX, we need to make sure this complies. So I'm just going to drag all of my selection references into a single group. And I don't need these groups anymore, so I'm just going to remove them. And this group, I'm going to rename. And this is going to be called Base Features. This first edge I'm going to say select tab edge. The reference face is going to be select tab face. And the reference object target body is going to be select slot body. So we have tab and slot. We've got a tab edge and face, and we've got a slot body. So there's all our selections done. Now we need to add all the different parameters. So I'm going to add a group. I want it at the top level. There we go. And this group is going to be called tab parameters. And in tab parameters, we need the distance of the first tab, which is tab start. So I drop that one in there. 
we've got distance of last tab, which is tab end. We've got the uh, width, which is tab width. That's the width of the tab. We've got the depth of the tab. And we've got the number of tabs. Okay. So these names are obviously coming a little bit crazy here. So I'm just going to quickly go through and rename all of these. This is the distance of first tab. This is distance of last tab. This one is the width. We don't need to say tab necessarily. And this one is the depth. And this is the number of tabs. All good so far. Now, what I've actually done in my dialog, I'm adding in a subgroup and this is the corner profile and this is where feature templates gets really powerful so in here I got my corner profile choice remember the expression which was the integer corner profile choice here we go we drop that in there and this corner profile choice is a display style of list of choices. Okay. And my list of choices, values, is none. I don't want a profile, or I want radius, or I want a chamfer. And these are given the values 0, 1, and 2. Okay, property setting is not valid. The specified expression variable does not exist. That's fine at the moment. I'm going to add in my radius and distance values for the radius and the chamfer. It's actually this one. I didn't re I didn't actually name this one. My radius is there, and my chamfer is there. So we have a radius and distance values. Now these have some visibility dependencies. So this needs to be true. And it is dependent on the corner profile choice. And we're looking for a value which is equal one. So we have a dependency, a visibility dependency is true. It's dependent on the corner profile choice. And this has a comparison value of two. So what we've done here, we've created this integer, which gives me a choice of none, zero, radius one, chamfer two. And dependent on the value of that, it's controlling the display state of radius and distance. Radius will be displayed when corner profile choice is one. Distance will be displayed when corner profile choice is two. We'll just go back and just change the name of this to tidy things up a little bit. Okay, one more thing to do here. We're going to add, let me just collapse this down so we can see where we are. I'm going to add one more group. And this group is my slot preferences. And this is the gap in X and Z values slot gap in X, 
slot gap in Z. So this is gap in X. And this is gap in Z. Or Z if you prefer. And that's our dialog built. We can validate the template. Property setting is not valid. Integer corner profile choice. So I still have a problem with my corner profile choice as an integer. Let me just double check. And the error here is to the return type. So I'm looking for 0, 1, and 2, and I've got return the index value. I just need return the index. There we go. So now we validate the template, and everything's good to go. So I can now finish my feature template, and I've created that. Uh, here we go, tab and slot 2 in my feature template folder. So let's now give it a try. Tab and slot two. Select the edge, select the face, select the target body. Put in the different parameters. And there we have our tab and slot. Go back and edit. Corner profile choice, let's put in a chamfer of two. And then we have our chamfer as well. So I hope you stayed with me. That's how the tavern slot feature template was created. Let's go back and just bring that up on screen once more. And we can see the construction.